Euh, nous allons écouter euh, Dana Radler. Alors, euh, vu que nous avons le temps, eh bien, euh, nous allons prendre le temps euh, de la présenter. Euh, Diplômée de l'Université de Bucarest, en 1994, Dana Radler a obtenu son doctorat en philologie en 2015. Ses thèmes de recherche combinent des aspects de l'identité, de la mémoire et des études de genre, mais aussi des sujets sur le e-learning, respectivement l'anglais à des fins euh, spécifiques. Il a pu, elle a publié des articles dans des revues académiques internationales en Belgique, en, Grin, en Grèce et notamment euh, en Inde, parmi d'autres pays ainsi que des chapitres de volumes thématiques apparus en Pologne, en Italie et en Roumanie. En 2021, elle a coédité son premier volume collectif intitulé « Panaitistrati, littérature et société euh, », la première étude bilingue en français et en anglais sur euh, ce, ce célèbre écrivain franco-roumain. La même année, elle a traduit la mémoire d'Elite Holstein, survivante de la Shoah, en roumain après l'édition anglaise. Terracotta Events of My Childhood, The Story of a Little Girl from a Small Town Called uh, Tchernovitch. Et elle est actuellement maître uh, de langue anglaise et roumaine au département des langues modernes et de la communication commerciale de la Faculté des relations économiques internationales de l'Académie la, de des études économiques de Bucarest. Et nous allons uh, l'écouter pour nous parler um, uh, de... Uh, friendship in the Egyptian Tale of Two Friends and Panaitistratis Stories. Et nous vous écoutons pour une intervention de 15 minutes, Madame Hadler. Je vous uh, Merci, merci à Sophie. Un moment pour partager. Uh, I have opened it, but let's see. Browse my computer, I suppose. But it's open. Just a second to see how it works. Presenter mode. A screen? Content from camera? Screen. Screen? Yes. But, uh, ah, okay, maybe I have to, like this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Uh, so this is the title of the presentation, and I'm going to uh, have this comparative look between an ancient Egyptian tale and uh, various representations regarding one of the key personalities in Panaiti Strati's uh, stories. Very briefly, I will go through a couple of introductory uh, elements. Then I will discuss uh, the structure and the key points in the narratives I have selected. I will discuss both similarities and differences in between these uh, different uh, stories and uh, preliminary conclusion. So, uh, the, the two stories I have selected are the ancient Egyptian uh, tale of two brothers and uh, various stories. Um, uh, the first one is uh, entitled as such, Mihail. Uh, uh, another one is uh, Le Bureau du Placement. Uh, and there are references if, even in other um, sources, such as, for instance, the consistent volume of correspondence between Romain Roland and Panaiti Strati. In addition, uh, the critical corpus also includes, for instance, this particular article uh, written a couple of years ago upon uh, the mysterious, enigmatic Mihail as a friend of Istrati, the volume concentrating on the Egyptian tale, and other types of sources regarding legends and how uh, literature uh, and narratives uh, work together. And there are various, I couldn't list all of them, there are also various uh, sources in the newspapers, in the literary news newspapers of the time, such as Rampa or uh, uh, Adevarul Literar and Artistic, Literary and Artistic Truth. So in general, in the leftist uh, type of uh, newspaper, those were um, welcoming Istrati especially. 
So we have two different types of texts that considerable distance from each other. First of all, the Egyptian tale is included primarily in the Papyrus uh, d'Orbini. Uh, and secondly, the story is written by uh, Panaiti Strati. I uh, illustrated one of the VIO volumes uh, published by uh, Edition Rider in 1927. Uh, and this is very briefly for us to understand because it is not probably familiar. There is even uh, the main author, uh, Susan Hollis, who wrote extensively on it, uh, one of the most recent uh, studies. Um, she discusses there are different views upon it. Uh, some considered it a legend, others consider this uh, tale part of the mythological repertoire. Others think it as a piece of fiction in uh, ancient Egypt. So basically the story is about uh, two close individuals. They are called brothers, but maybe they were not really related by blood because Anubis is the main one. Of course, he also stands, we could say, as an embodiment of the eponymous uh, Egyptian god. Bata is uh, the younger brother. He is um, extremely strong, uh, good at physical work. Um, and although we, I mean, uh, this is not so uh, familiar, but he's also a deity in the uh, Egyptian mythology. Uh, the, the, the narrative covers actually two parts. First, uh, there is a main incident in which Anubis' wife tries to seduce Bata. He refuses, and then the wife uh, incriminates him as soon as uh, her husband appears. Uh, and the second, the, the second part of the story, after Bata wishes to, let's say, prove his uh, uh, honesty by even. Um, uh, um, 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 very serious act such as that of emasculation. So he he uh, cuts his sexual organs and uh, throws them into the river. And this is, of course, a symbolic gestures. Later, he went to the Valley of Cedars. Um, there is another female figure, this time created by gods, who is given, well, given to him so that he can complete his human existence. But uh, even with this person, there are, uh, let's say, different, like in any tale, there are different uh, sorts of uh, trials, uh, very difficult um, experiences which Bata has to uh, overcome. And he does that because each time he leaves a clue for Anubis to save him. At the end, but in the last uh, trial, a splinter goes into the wife uh, of the of the um, uh, pharaoh. Uh, she gives birth to a son, and later this son, which becomes, uh, let's say, an, uh, uh, a reincarnated uh, uh, presence of Bata, becomes the king, and then both Anubis and Bata continue to rule the country, and finally this whole series of uh, tragic experiences and and they can they find at peace with each other. So the, the uh, of course the story uh, questions not only the problem of friendship but also uh, betrayal. What kind of response an individual uh, can offer to the society, to the community, and what kind of solution can he find in such circumstances? Uh, in the case of Istrati's stories, this is uh, a bit more familiar. They met each other uh, before nine, uh, um 1900s, so at the end of the 19th century, when Istrati lived in Braila, when he was practically uh, an apprentice. And uh, although he was a teenager, he had this, let's say, uh, tormenting question of his mind, how can I find uh, somebody who is close to me? How can I find somebody who understands me? That life is not only about, you know, earning bread uh, or living a modest life or even a very comfortable one. 
So uh, the the attempt to find a peer uh, beyond, let's say, uh, material uh, resources. We can see I have tried to make this very brief summary of you know, you know the context. So they are, let's say, um, included. Uh, the Egyptian tale in communal history. Uh, it, there are even other versions of the uh, uh, same narrative. Um, in Istratis' case, it has an, uh, clearly autobiographical nature. In the Egyptian tale, we, mm, the, the condition are very modest and even in Istrati uh, and uh, Mihail's case also they often uh, you know face poverty and uh, have to struggle uh, to find shelter or to find food. Uh, in the case of the Egyptian uh, uh, tale, the, the temporal distance is uh, considerable. It was written in the 19th, 19th dynasty, so around uh, 1250 before Christ. Uh, Istrati stories came um, around 1927, uh, so the first years of Istrati's affirmation uh, as a writer uh, in France. Uh, uh, and I have also selected a couple of um, uh, quotes relevant for the, this uh, presentation. Uh, the uh, Anubi's wife immediately noted uh, his strength and being a very vigorous person, and she was fascinated by his physical appearance. Uh, so she is the person who, let's say, stirs, creates the conflict in between the two. Uh, in the case of Mihail and Istrati, there is only a very, you know, collateral, marginal reference to a young female. Otherwise, they never had exactly the same kind of situation. So the, the question of friendship remains, but somebody who comes in between them, um, there is no such uh, a character. Actually, if they have conflicts, those happen between uh, the two of them. Uh, um, in the Egyptian tale, uh, also another uh, quote um, here, how um, describing how uh, you know life in such uh, conditions. So life is very modest, uh, and uh, he takes very seriously everything he has to do, even if it uh, it is about uh, farming. Um, the, you know daily tasks to deal with farming and uh, taking care of the land. Uh, in Nistrati's case, in the stories portraying him, um, the reader immediately discovers that this is, uh, as we have noted, a, an enigmatic person. He was of an uh, aristocratic descent. He was for sure part of a noble family. He never revealed to Istrati, to Istrati with, uh, you know, his parents. He never exactly say, except that his mother must have been of a Tatar origin and probably his father was a Russian. He left that because he was, he mm, indirectly says that he was disappointed with his own family's, let's say, uh, beliefs uh, and expectations upon him. So he decided to leave um, the luxury and the resources and to carry uh, the life of a vagabond. But this offered him the freedom of the mind and the freedom of uh, finding those who shared uh, his taste. Uh, to continue, let's say, this comparison, uh, the two brothers in the ancient, uh, in the Egyptian stories are close, but uh, there are maybe as often as in tales, there are elements which are not very clearly expected, uh, explained. Why, for instance, Anubis takes the wife, uh, the word of his wife without questioning uh, in no way if Bata was suspected of seducing her. The chronology is very linear. Uh, the two wives Anubis' wives and later the wife uh, of the pharaoh remain nameless, so their identity is almost not important or the personality of the women was not, you know, meaningful for uh, the writer. 
the inf there is, however, uh, an influential character in both stories. In the case of the Egyptian tale, this is the pharaoh, and in the case of the um, of Istratis writings, this is Vangelis, an old and rich uncle. And I have also tried to summarize a couple of more examples upon the two. Uh, not only we do not only uh, realize that Bata was a, a strong man, um, but uh, as we say, he tries to um, ask this question uh, to uh, the woman who, uh, um, and he also declares when there are when uh, he faces those let's say tragic uh, situations leading to him appearing under another form uh, he tells her that i will survive that i will can uh, you know try uh, this solution yeah thank you uh, in the case of uh, istratis stories um he, uh, not only that his his identity was not completely revealed, but uh, in terms of knowledge, he was of a different uh, level compared to Istrati at that time. Uh, he could speak several languages. Istrati at some point mentions five or even seven of them. For sure, he could speak probably even Tatar, Russian, and for sure uh, French, because he was the one he, who he inspired, who advised, he, who, he, who even worked, uh, who taught uh, Istrati of, uh, um, a couple of French words. He tried to uh, teach him a conjugation of basic verbs. Uh, so he, in terms of uh, um, knowledge especially, he was a role model. Uh, the two influential characters, Adrian's uncle, offers uh, uh, Adrian, the alter ego in the stories, the chance to settle in Egypt and have a very comfortable shop and existence. Uh, Adrian refuses it. Uh, in the case of the Egyptian uh, tale, uh, the, the wife of Anubis invites him and he declines this uh, seductive uh, offer. So uh, to sum up very quickly, because time is limited, even if we talk about a legend or a mythological narrative, both stories contain what I, I would might call realist types of elements. They are placed in a distant past, even in the case of Istratis, uh, writings because he at considerable time over 15 years or even 20 he looked at those memories and then he uh, retrieved them into writing so there is a mix of memories a mix of authors there is a very clear ethical message um, the love for nature and for the simple um, existence is visible and the obstacles can sometimes be overcome, but not uh, all the time. So uh, there are always ups and downs in human relationships. Thank you. This is it. Merci beaucoup, Madame Radler, pour uh, cette intéressante, uh, très intéressante uh, intervention sur uh, Panaiti Strati et, et son œuvre. On va uh, tout de suite écouter uh, l'intervention suivante. Sauf s'il y a des questions ou on conserve les questions pour après. Ok, on garde les questions pour après. Euh, on va